everyone. Thank you for joining the webinar today. Um, we're going to be joined by a cannabis technology expert today, Trevor Christensen. Hey, Trevor, how's it going? Pretty good. How are you doing, Stephanie? Awesome. Thanks for joining us. So today, Trevor is going to be sharing some awesome insights about how dispensary owners can use technology to succeed in their business. Quick introduction to myself. I'm Stephanie. I'll be hosting the webinar, and I'm the content marketing manager at Kaya Push. Kaya Push helps dispensary owners grow and scale their operations by simplifying HR, payroll, and workforce management, like scheduling and time tracking from one easy to use platform. And Kaya Push also integrates with leading dispensary POS systems. So therefore offering a end-to-end -end solution that gives business owners added transparency to gather insights like sales versus labor reports and customized reporting. Um, and our goal at Kaya Push really is to help make things easy for dispensary owners to help them succeed at what they do. And so that's why we wanted to host Trevor and put the spotlight on him today from OnSharp. He's an expert in his field and he has joined us to help you succeed. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Trevor and he will share who he is and what his company is all about and how he can help you succeed in the dispensary industry. Thanks, Trevor. Take it away. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks, Stephanie. Yeah, appreciate uh, appreciate you give us this platform today to to talk a little bit about um, technology and to talk a little bit about how technology can really help uh, dispensary owners, you know, grow their business. A little bit of background about myself: I come from about eight years of technology experience. I've been working with websites, uh, digital marketing software, a little bit with IT as well. Uh, for the last three years, though, I've been more involved with working directly with dispensaries, cultivators, and really any business related in the art, in the cannabis industry on things like websites, uh, digital marketing, custom dev, and app projects. Uh, I also live out in, I'm from actually originally from Fargo, North Dakota, uh, and I moved out here to Colorado about three years ago and loving it ever since with my with my six-year-old golden retriever, Winston, which I, I'm hoping that we don't hear him at all on this call today. So uh, a little bit of background about OnSharp and who we are. We are a web and custom development company, and we've been around for about 20 years. Uh, basically, what we do is we focus on website design and website development. We also focus on mobile app development, uh, both for internally within companies and externally. Uh, and then we do custom development projects as well. So this could be anything about bridging, you know, different pieces of software together, creating custom pieces of software that a company is looking to build. Uh, really anything is, is available here. And then lastly, digital marketing. We do things like SEO, SEM, and then digital marketing um, and social media marketing as well. A uh, little bit of things I'll mention here before we jump into it. If anybody is headed out to MJ BizCon this year in October, uh, both OnStrip and Kaya Push will be out there. So definitely feel free to, to stop by, say hi. I think we both got some drawings going on. I'm sure we'll all have some, some goodies and some freebies there as well. So yeah, if anybody's showing up to MJ BizCon in October, definitely swing by uh, and say hello. So what we're going to cover today, everybody, is first awareness, you know, really how to build an online presence, how to build a website that's going to help you drive more traffic to it, uh, as well as help you sell more product in the long term as well. Uh, the second piece is going to be really about what technology you really need, uh, what's very integral in, in terms of helping you run your dispensary. And then the third piece is going to be more about uh, integrations and some so maybe some softwares that are more of wants that can really help take your dispensary uh, to that next tier. So let's just jump right into the first part about the awareness, the how to build an online presence that's going to help you sell more product. Or as, as my boy Richard Simmons would say, you know, let's, let's whip your online presence into shape. So some of the problems are it can be difficult to gain exposure and drive traffic to your dispensary website. And this, this isn't unique just to the cannabis space and just to dispensaries in general. This is a challenge for everybody um, in today's society where your online presence is really everything and you're up against a lot of competition. And so gaining that exposure can be very difficult. Now it can be even more difficult in the cannabis space for a few reasons. Um, obviously SEO can be time consuming. If you aren't familiar of what SEO is, it's an acronym for something called search engine optimization, which is essentially how well that your website uh, is being found online 
via Google, via different search engines, when people are searching for the different products and services that you offer. Uh, in the cannabis space, Facebook, Google, and Instagram still don't allow paid ads. Uh, so that's kind of being taken away from any dispensaries or cannabis companies in terms of promoting their business. Uh, and then lastly, you know, the market's also saturated in certain areas. So you have a ton of competition um, around you. And so trying to get your website top of mind for a lot of people is not always the easiest thing. And some of the things that this is costing you, um, you end up purchasing listings from, from online directories that like Weed Maps or Leafly or anything like that. Um, in some of my previous roles, I, I've worked with companies that were spending anywhere from 10 to 50 to upwards of 100 grand a month um, on Weed Maps. And really, that's more of a, a pay to play kind of format. Um, whereas when you have your own website, you kind of own all your customers at that, at that time. Uh, it's, you're, you're paying for tough to track advertising too. You know, you're buying, you're buying things like billboards or you're buying things like magazine ads, different things like that, where it's really tough to track, you know, really the kind of traffic that it's drawing to your online presence. Um, and then you're also just losing out on potential revenue by not investing in a, in a strong website. Um, it's, it's costing you business. And, and a lot of times they'll end up going to, to one of your competitors. So really what's the solution? Well, obviously it would be to create a website that not only attracts visitors, uh, but gets them to some sort of call to action, like placing an online order, or if you don't have online ordering, maybe it's picking up the phone to call you, or obviously just, just dropping in and stopping into your dispensary as well. Uh, some of the things that your website or that your dispensary website needs, uh, it needs to be mobile friendly. If oh, really over 60% of searches on Google are now done on mobile devices, so if your website isn't mobile friendly and your customers have to uh, have to pinch and drag to, to find out where they need to go, and it's just very cumbersome to, to work through on a mobile device, there's a good chance that they'll just jump off the website and, and find someone else to go to because really convenience is key for a lot of customers nowadays. Um, your website needs to be SEO and content focused. So this is where you need to follow Google's SEO best practices and do things like keyword research, competitor research, you know, add metadata, which is basically text descriptions to things on your website, alt tags, which is adding text descriptions to your images, start writing blogs or hire someone to do it for you. Uh, really just start creating relevant content and update it regularly. Third, you know, have an online menu, have your products listed. Uh, in, in 2019, e-commerce sales uh, accounted for about 14% of retail purchases. That's expected to go to 22% by 2023. And this is all of retail. But what this is showing us is that it's trending more towards customers want to do their shopping online. Uh, if you by chance live in a state that or province that doesn't allow your customers to place orders through your website, then at the very least, you should list your products online. The cannabis space is a very, you know, visual Im uh, is a very visual industry. So being able to see the different products that you guys offer is very important. Um, like I said, if I can't place the order online, at least let me see what you have in your store, because that's going to get me ultimately to that that call to action. Whether that's like I said, dropping into your actual dispensary. Strong imagery. Again, cannabis is a very uh, it's a very image uh, centric industry, and so by having good, clean, high quality images on your website, it's going to keep people more engaged on it. It's going to keep them on it longer and it's going to get them to become more of a customer of your guys's. Uh, and then lastly, you know, establish credibility and, and tell your story. Cannabis consumption is, is still relatively new for a lot of people uh, and it will be for some time. So if a new customer visits your site and they want to know that they can trust you, you know, educate them, tell them, you know, the differences between different types of cannabis products, you know, how it's going to affect them differently. Have yourself be a resource for them when it comes to their cannabis education, because this is what's going to create that lifelong customer. And again, they're going to trust you in something that might be still relatively new to them. Um, and now as we get to like, tell your story, you know, cannabis also isn't new. And a lot of people in the, in the sense that the, the, the crop has been around for a while, the medicine's been around for a while. So a lot of people entering the industry are doing so, and the ones that are starting dispensaries are doing so because they have of a, of a calling, of a passion, of, of some, some purpose that they have to help people. Have your website tell that story. Tell people why you got into the industry and, and why they should shop with you. Uh, that's going to take them to that next level as well. And I just have a quick example here of, of Coastal California, which is a website, um, or sorry, a dispensary out in California that 
you know, their website covered a lot of the bases. So I'll show you here quickly. You know, obviously this is the homepage, you know, very bright imagery, images, good, clean content. I can show you quick here too, uh, what it looks like on, on mobile devices. So you can see that it's, it's very easy to use, very easy to, easy to maneuver around. And this is going to get people to ultimately place those orders. As you can also see that they have, you know, their products up here as well. Um, and then even a little about us page here too, telling their story. So I, I really like this site and to show you as an example of really what a good dispensary website can look like uh, when it's all put together well. Jump back into it here. So now we're gonna move on to the, the next piece here. And it's really gonna be about what technology you need to, to run a streamlined business. So some of the problems are you're just not sure what technology or software is, is integral in running a dispensary. And some of the causes of that problem is maybe this is the first time that you've owned a business. So you're not used to using or, or purchasing different technologies to help you run your business better. Uh, the can Maybe the cannabis space is brand new to you. So you're, you're not really sure what technology is out there specifically for, for dispensaries. Um, and the fact that the cannabis industry is just new. So there's really no, there's no perfect playbook out there in terms of the technology um, that, that's gonna help you really succeed. So you kind of have to do your own due diligence in that, in that aspect of it. Uh, so what are the costs? Uh, time and energy, by not having the correct software and technology in place at your dispensary, uh, this is costing you uh, enormous amount of time, you know, whether it be clerical work or whether it be just headaches that it's costing you, um, and then just the energy that you have to do with it. Um, increased labor expenses, obviously, by not having things in, in place to help you streamline everything, you're going to have to bring on more employees, which is going to do more, just more clerical type work. Um, and then it's also costing you to sleep at night. So what's the solution? Familiarize yourself with the types of technology that your dispensary can't afford to lose or not can't afford not to use. Uh, so what are those technology pieces? First, POS. Uh, if you're open for business, you, you honestly should already have a POS system. Uh, it's really the lifeblood of your dispensary. It can handle everything from transactions to check-ins to inventory to compliance. Um, and then when looking at these systems, really find ones that play well uh, with others, with other pieces of technology and other softwares. And that's also going to help you scale into the future. I just mentioned a couple of them on the screen here, like Koba, Flowhub, um, and, and Greenline. Second, e-commerce. You know, really, you should have some sort of e-commerce on your website if you can have that in your state of province. province. Uh, customers want to be able to shop online, as I mentioned a little bit earlier. Giving them this option offers them convenience. Um, and there's a couple different ways to do this. Right now in the cannabis space, there's a lot of iframe softwares out there. And what, what that means is it's a third party software that you're just taking the menu aspect of it and embedding it directly into your website. And then there's also the native aspect of e-commerce, which is where you're the one building uh, the e-commerce portion of your website. Pros and cons with both. Uh, some of the things with the iframe is it's probably a little bit cheaper uh, initially, but a lot of times this is a subscription-based service of some sort, so you do have ongoing costs with it. Whereas if you go the native e-commerce route, it's something where you can control the whole customer interaction from start to finish, and it's completely customized to, to exactly what you're looking for. Um, the con that just might come with it is it might be a little bit more expensive up front, uh, but it's definitely going to save you money in, in the long run. Then you obviously have your HR and payroll. Uh, and one of the ones obviously I'm gonna mention on here is our, our partner in this webinar today is Kaya Push. You know, if, if you have employees, if you, you also have to pay them and you can use this software to help with payroll, uh, HR, scheduling, onboarding, time tracking, and reporting. Security, with, with a lot of the industry still working in straight cash, it's extremely important that your security is taken care of. Uh, this includes anything like monitoring the building inside and out, uh, protecting employees and customers, uh, and good security also deters theft and, and other un unwanted behavior. And then lastly here, we have accounting. Really, every business needs to handle accounting, and dispensaries are no different. Uh, accounting software helps you manage your cash flow, you create your P&Ls, your balance sheets, pay your bills, track your outstanding influence or invoices, and without relying on spreadsheets. And it can also help ensure that you're staying in compliance in such a regulated industry such as cannabis. So 
these are some of the softwares and technology that should be implemented really at every dispensary. The, the next items that I'm gonna talk about are really what can help you take your dispensary up to the next level. So really how software and integrations can, can help your dispensary. So what are those other pieces uh, to take you to that, that second tier? So one of them being, uh, sorry, uh, the problem first, obviously you may be more focused on running the day-to-day -day of your dispensary and really just have had the time to research um, on how to streamline and grow your dispensary. Some of the causes of that very similar with the, with the first instance where, you know, maybe you're just new to running a business. Maybe you're just not sure what some of your options are. Um, and some specific technology solutions really just haven't been developed yet. We have to understand that, that cannabis and the whole industry is still in its infancy stage. And so new technology and new software is being developed every day. And I'm fully confident that the, the technology that's going to that's gonna be a game changer in this space still hasn't been invented yet. So a lot of times, if, if you can't find it, that doesn't mean it can't be built. Um, and that's where a company like Entrep could come in and hands too. Uh, what are some of the costs? You're losing out on competitive advantage by just focusing on the day-to-day -day and not looking for, for ways that you can really scale and grow your dispensary. Uh, your, customer, your, your competitors are taking that away from you. Uh, you have increased labor costs, and then you have the loss of revenue as well. By not really optimizing everything to its full potential, uh, you're losing out on, on definitely pieces of your revenue. So what's the solution? You know, really there's a lot of software and possible integrations out there to take your dispensary to the next level. And I'll go through some of those here next on the next slide. One of them being analytics. So what a lot of people don't understand is that data has taken over oil as the, the world's most valuable commodity. Uh, this data is usually coming directly from your POS system in, in a dispensary example. And a lot of analytic companies like Headset, like BDS Analytics, will tie directly into whatever POS you're using. Uh, but this is super important uh, when it comes to forecasting the future to really understanding who your customers are. This is gonna tell you what product's selling well, when's maybe your busiest times, really what each customer looks like. You can start to create profiles and really start to understand just who your shoppers are. The second one being CRM and loyalty. So it's really important to have a relationship with your customers. You really got to know who they are and, and find effective ways to communicate with them. Uh, CRM and loyalty programs can do wonders for your marketing. What you can do with this is you can actually create customer profiles for each person. So now you can be more targeted with your marketing efforts. So let's say instead of sending out a, a text blast to everybody talking about some edible special that you have going on, now you're just sending out to the people who have actually purchased edibles from you in the past. So you're not muddying the waters and just spamming all of your customers with your deals. You're very, being very specific and you can get this information through your CRM and loyalty programs. Um, and obviously loyalty po programs and doing points and pro different things like that, it keeps keep people coming back to your dispensary time and time again. Then you have your in-store advertising. So like green screens or enlightened. So this is basically kind of like if you've ever been to a dispensary and you've seen the, the digital signage um, or menus that they have up within their store. Uh, this definitely gives a better experience to the customers and it can really showcase your inventory, your featured products. It can highlight specials, build brand awareness. And a lot of times it can streamline the process for when your customers actually get in and start talking to bud tenders because they might already have a good idea of what they want. Um, you could also use this as you could also turn around and use this as an alternative mode of, of revenue. Um, I've seen dispensaries use this uh, to go after brands and actually have brands advertise within their dispensary. So now you also have another stream of revenue um, on that front. And then you just have custom software apps. And so this is again, yeah, like I mentioned earlier, where a cut where a company like Entrep would come in, where if you wish your, you know, your your software could do something, or you wish your softwares could talk to each other, or you just wanted to create the next best software for a dispensary because you see an absolute need for it. This is where coming to OnSharp, really walking through the planning phase, the blue building the blueprints for whatever project they may be, um, and really building out these projects successfully can come in handy. So as I mentioned earlier, just because something might not exist on the market today doesn't mean it can't be built. And so some of the things that I like to mention too about tips for choosing different technology and software. So the first one being really research before you buy. This 
software and technology is an investment into your business. You know, evaluate your needs first. Really consider the customer wants, your challenges, and, and the competition. And think ahead. Think about where your dispensary is going to go in the next six months, year, three to five years, because you want to integrate technologies into your business that's going to be able to scale with you as your business grows as well. And then be cautious of new companies. Uh, I've been in the cannabis industry, like I said, for about three years now. I, I see new companies pop up all the time. Um, a lot of times it just seems like it's a, it's a cash grab where they really haven't figured out how to build certain things yet or design certain pieces yet. So be wary of those, those new companies out there that have a lot of bells and whistles because a lot of time they don't have the support yet. And that really ties into that next piece then is prioritize customer support. As I mentioned, a lot of these technologies are still new. So make sure that you have the, the, the customer support behind you because there's going to be issues that come up with your technology and it, that's going to happen and, that, and that's okay. But make sure that you're, you're working with a company that's going to resolve those issues in a, in a timely manner as well. So just to kind of recap what we covered today, we talked a little bit about awareness, as I mentioned, how to build an online presence or how to build a website that's going to drive more traffic to, to your dispensary and going to help you sell more product. Uh, we talked about technology, really what are the, the needs that you need to run a streamlined operation, and then the different piece of technology and integrations that can really, like I said, take your business and your dispensary to that next level. Um, you can connect with all of us online. Obviously, you know, Kaya Push, at Kaya Push, Stephanie emails up front there as well. My contact information is, is up there too. Um, you can feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn as well and, and shoot, me, shoot me a message that way. I'd be happy to, to help. A lot of times I like to just view myself as, as a resource. You know, sometimes you might not need all this, you know, website custom app development right off the bat. But um, I definitely know the struggle that it can be with starting a new business like this and using different new pieces of technology. So always feel free to reach out and, and use me as a resource if you ever need to. And Stephanie, I don't know, did we have, uh, did we, did we have any questions come through? I know that was pretty quick with the, with the presentation there. That was awesome. Thanks, Trevor. That was so great. We do have a couple of questions, actually, which is awesome. Sorry, my cat has the zoomies right now. So we might be mm. hearing some pitter patter. <laughs> a lot of pets it. today. I love it so much. Um, yeah. So before I jump into the questions too, I just wanted to also thank you for all that information and remind everyone we will be sending out a webinar replay. So if anyone, you know, missed something or you want a copy of the slide deck, we'll be sending that out. And um, also, if you are looking for a um, software system to run the people management, uh, Kaya Push is offering a free trial right now. So that will also be in the follow-up email. And now I do have a few questions that are coming. And if anyone else has questions, do put them in the chat box. I'm going to try and get um, as many answered as we can. So the first question is about SEO, which is always a, a tricky area to understand. So the question is, I understand SEO takes time, but what are some things I can do today to boost my rankings? Sure, yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, something that a lot of people can do on their own without really having to hire any outside help with it. Um, one of the things I see a lot of people that they don't have is a Google My Business page. You know, if, if you haven't set up a, a Google My Business page and if you haven't started gathering reviews on that, if, if nobody knows what I'm talking about, it's essentially... You know, if you search for a business, it's that business listing off to the right-hand page that shows the website, gives a directions link, and also so shows reviews to it. Um, as I mentioned, a lot of dispensaries that I meet with don't have that even set up. And Google loves itself. So the more things that you can do with Google, um, like creating YouTube content too helps out, the better. Um, but yeah, definitely setting up a Google My Business page and then pushing people to are rewarding people really for, for giving you re reviews on there because the more five star reviews that your that your Google listing can have, the more Google rewards you and it will shoot you up higher um, on search engines. Also, just you know, creating more content um, is a is a nice easy way. You know, creating little blog posts that's going to help drive traffic to the website. Just continually updating and putting out new content is going to be very beneficial and it's something that you know you can do in a very short period of time. It takes time to to get high rankings on Google, but it doesn't take time to start, you know? Awesome. 
Um, the next question is about kind of in the integration space. And I know that you were mentioning, um, you know, connecting with the customers. This question is around uh, the CRM piece. Mm -hmm. The question is, should I integrate my CRM with anything like my website or my POS? Is that even possible? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, it, it depends on the different CRM that you're using along with the, the POS system that you're using. But if, if you're allowed to tie it together, you definitely should. Um, as I mentioned, data is, is so huge nowadays. Um, and if you're not tracking people and, and putting them into a database and then, and then eventually marketing out to them, you are really, really missing out. Um, and so, yeah, finding, like I said, a lot of people use a CRM like HubSpot. There's, there's, there's cannabis specific ones like Spring Big that, again, probably tie into most POS systems out there. Um, so definitely I would suggest if you can tie all the systems in together and, and if anybody isn't sure if their CRM would tie into their website or, or into their POS system, definitely reach out and, and we can have a further conversation on that as well. Nice. Those pieces are so complex. So it's really awesome to have someone who has all the insights. Um, and this is a similar question, actually, again, chatting about something that you mentioned. So you were speaking about analytics mm -hmm. um, and provided platforms like Headset and BDS. Uh, the question is, what are some things that the analytics provided by those platforms measure? So, yeah, I mean, I kind of touched on a few of them a little bit earlier. You know, you're really finding out maybe, A, you know, what, what's your busiest time? You know, is it is it Thursdays at, at two o'clock or is it, you know, Fridays at, at four, you know, and when's your slow time? You know, this will help you maybe dictate, OK, when do I need more staff on or when when can I kind of roll back on staff a little bit? And then you also start to see just trends in general. You know, every market's different, too. Like you could read you could read a national publication that says, you know, uh, cannabis concentrates are on the rise, but that might not mean that specifically to your dispensary, you know, so by having the specific data on your customers at your dispensary, you might see that, hey, your flower is is actually on the rise. So now you want to start stocking up with more flower and maybe pull back on the concentrates or the edibles. It just really helps you really forecast things in the future better. And it helps you kind of avoid those headaches or maybe overstaffing or understaffing um, in certain times as well, but you can really start to understand every single thing about your customers, you know, even things down to like the demographics There's most of them, you know, are most of your clients 21 to 30 are most of them 45 to 50, you know, and all that can help dictate where your dispensary goes on in the future. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. It's so important using data to make decisions. And that sounds like it's so helpful to use that in terms of even what you order who you who you order it for right um we also on in terms of the people management side of things um talk about a little bit about the kaya push integration with some of the pos systems that we integrate with allowing you to pull labor versus sales reports and also allowing you to create um automated schedules that are created like based on forecasts. So, mm -hmm. you know, you're getting the the support in terms of what to order, when, how much based on data. And then you're also getting the support of who to staff, when, how often based on data. So data doesn't lie, right? Yeah. And it, it just, it takes, it takes such a weight off a, a dispensary owner's shoulders too, because it's just like, you don't have to sit there and, and think about it really anymore. I mean, the, the information is right there in front of you. It's being aggregated exactly for you. So it just it just takes that 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 mental stress off of a person's mind. And assumptions can be wrong too. Like mm. you may feel that it's it was really yeah. and then look at the numbers and it it actually wasn't. It's it's so hard to know without those data specific inputs. Right. Awesome. I think that this this is actually a nice lead into the next question. Being someone who is passionate about the cannabis industry, um, curious to know what do you think is on the horizon for the cannabis industry? That's that's big. Oof, that's a that's a great question. I mean, just because there's so many opportunities, there's so many different facets um, of the industry. Um, I, I don't really have a one stop shop answer here. I, I do think the cannabis industry is going to be a leader on um, on inside agriculture moving into the future. I think just what we're seeing within the space, um, it's going to be used for, for urban growing really all across the country. And so I think that's going to be a really cool piece. I think there's still a lot of software in terms of um, helping just the 
any any business, you know, whether it's whether it's being able to remotely monitor your crops while you're not, you know, in in the grow room or anything like that. We're already seeing a lot of that. We're seeing things like where you can have plants in different rows right next to each other actually have completely different environments where this one's at like a 65% humidity and the one right next to it, you know, separated by an invisible curtain is at, you know, 70% humidity. It's it's amazing some of the technology that's coming out of the space. And so, like I said, I, I don't even know what it, what it could look like, you know, but, but, but I have a lot of conversations with people in different facets of the industry today. And it's amazing what they what they talk about and what's being developed. Um, but I think a lot, as I mentioned, has yet to be developed. And I think as more states get on board and more people get involved, we're going to find more pain points. And there's going to be smarter people, too, that, that figure out ways to to hone in on those pain points. I mean, Kaya Push, obviously, a, a great example right there with, with, with HR and payroll, you know, with, with cannabis being such a regulated and, and highly compliant industry. You, you can't maybe just go to a regular uh, HR and payroll company. You have to find a company that is specific for cannabis. And I think you're going to see that in a lot of different facets of the of the industry as well. There's so it's such an interesting and fast growing industry. Mm-hmm. That leads us into uh, the next question. And this is the second to last question. Um, so you mentioned that there are some solutions that haven't been built yet, of course. Um, what would uh-huh. you want to see built that doesn't exist? Or what's a integration that your company um, has built that was a game changer that you feel like you should share? Um, well, like, I, think, I think delivery is, is going to be a, a big thing in the future. Obviously, like in certain states, it already is, like in California. Um, but I think that that's going to be a big thing. So I think people are going to find different technologies and solutions to, to really streamline the whole delivery process. You know, really being able to, just like with DoorDash, being able to see, you know, when your order was placed, when it was received, where your driver is at in the process, and just this whole, you know, touch point with, with your customer, I think could be a big thing. Um, not to say that that stuff like that doesn't already exist either. Um, I think you'll start to see more dispensaries build their own apps. Right now, I, I don't see a lot of dispensaries doing that just because for the longest time, uh, the Apple and and uh, Android store didn't allow cannabis apps, or at least the, uh, be able to help facilitate the sale of cannabis apps. And that's changing now. Um, I think Apple recently came out and said that they're allowing it now. I think Google's not quite there yet, but they're definitely helping people still develop the apps. Just, I think, again, just not being able to sell through it. So I think you're going to start to see a lot of dispensaries actually build their own apps because, again, when you can kind of control that whole customer interaction and the whole sales process, um, it's going to really create that stickiness with your customers and, and get them to keep coming back time and time again and allow you to send out push notifications for, for deals and stuff like that. So I think we're going to see a, a lot more companies start to build their own apps, um, honestly. Cool. It's so, it's so funny. You're like, naturally, you, Trevor doesn't know what the next question is, but you're naturally leading into the questions with your yeah. answer. So uh, the next question is actually around, this is the uh, final question as well. So what would be the difference between building an app for my dispensary versus just having a mobile friendly website? Sure. Yeah. That, and that's a great question too. So uh, I have a lot of conversations with people that they come to me that they want to build an app, you know, cause that's exciting. It's cool. It's, it's sexy for that, for that for lack of a better term. Um, but a lot of times what they're looking to do can be done honestly with, with a mobile friendly website. Uh, the only time really that you'd want to look at, at building as app is obviously when you're very serious about it, because building a, a custom app for your company is no small undertaking. Um, it, it's not cheap. Um, and, and you really want to make sure you get it done right. Because some of the things to think about is that people are very selective with the apps that they have on their phone. If they're not using this app, you know, on a, a daily or like a weekly basis, they're not going to download it. I mean, that, that's like I said, that's where just a mobile friendly dispensary website would work just as good. Um, the only time I said if you, you'd build an app, I would say is if you're getting a lot of traffic to the to the website, you're getting a lot of online orders, and you want to streamline that process. So an app just allows you to be a lot more, even more so user friendly than a than a than a mobile friendly website. And a lot of times there's not as many like options and like and distractions with an app. 
it's very streamlined in, into directly what you want your customers to be able to do. So um, it's it's not for everybody. Um, as I mentioned, a lot of times I just say, you know, you can have your mobile friendly website. You can teach your customers even to save the website to their to their uh, home screen on their on their phone, and it can kind of act just as an app. But if you guys are ready to like, take that take that to the next level and you know start doing push notifications, maybe even have like a little chat form with your, your customers to talk back and forth and just like a whole you know environment where you can control the entire customer interaction, that's where an app would come in handy. Nice, also oh, awesome. Um, thank you so much, Trevor. As always, you always have so much exciting information about what's going on in the cannabis industry and what's going to be happening in the cannabis industry. Um, so, so helpful. And I'm sure this is going to be a really um, great resource for a lot of people who either already mm -hmm. are running a dispensary and want to, you know, use technology to really bring things to the next level, yep. money, save time and make their life easier. Or for people yep. who are just thinking of launching and don't know where to begin because it is yep. a complex um, yep. area. Yeah. And I would say, I mean, don't, don't be resistant to technology. I, I, I talk with people as I mentioned, I, w I didn't just work with dispensary owners for the longest time. I, I work with a bunch of people from a bunch of different industries. And what I find a lot of times is, you know, obviously a lot of business owners are older and they're a little bit resistant to technology because it's, it's something that maybe you don't understand. But, you know, do the homework, do the research on it, because you're going to find out that by incorporating technology into your business, it's it's going to save you so much time and headache. And so definitely be just embrace it uh, because I don't think technology is going anywhere. Um, and the more you resist to it, the, the longer it's going to take you to get where you want to go. So, so true. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, Trevor. Um, cool. We'll be sending out the webinar replay to everyone and feel free to connect with us online on LinkedIn or Instagram or email. And it was awesome to have you join us today. Cool. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thanks, okay. everybody.